I think Victor Chen is right. British Columbia has the chance, the potential, to be one of the best places in the world, or the best place in the world for education. I think he's right on. So, to sum that thought up, Vancouver, what a place. It really is. Now, my talk today might, be, might have been a lot worse than it's going to be. Uh, I came from Vernon in the Okanagan Valley, and I went to UBC, uh, an English scholarship. Uh, I wanted to be an English prof, and unfortunately, I failed English 100. <laughs> so this, this led me down a little bit of a sidetrack, um, and I got into uh, microbiology and biochemistry. And this led to a, a fabulous life. Um, you know, I studied my whole life, every, nothing you can see. Um, 35 years in a windowless office. I, I've got it all, right? <laughs> but the world of research has, in fact, been very good. Um, it's, it em embraces, in some ways, the TED spirit. Uh, first of all, it is ruthlessly competitive. I don't know how many of you know that, but it's true. In addition, and this is in the TED spirit, it's ruthlessly collaborative. So one of the things that I'll talk to you about today is the result of many, many decades of scientific collaboration, culminating in the last 12 years of work, which is about uh, how long it took to develop the technology that I'll describe to you. And I think it's a, an idea worth spreading because it can affect your, your health. <clears throat> we study blood. And this is showing blood, uh, a drop of blood. What is interesting about this is that your whole health universe is in that drop of blood. And I'll explain this in some detail, but it's the way to the future, I believe, in terms of individualizing diagnostic tests. So that's why we call this session your world in a drop of blood. Now, one of the things that we measure in blood are things called biomarkers. They're molecules that indicate health or disease, the status of each individual. Now, let me describe it this way. Blood is pretty interesting. The average person has about five liters of blood in their body. Uh, your heart pumps 7,000 liters of blood a day. It's about 20,000 kilometers a week that the blood travels in your body. And during that transit, it essentially links together all the cells and the tissues and the organs of your body in such a way that it washes over them a lot. And in doing so, it picks up molecules from all the different cells, tissues, and organs. And there it represents, in fact, every tissue and cell in your body can be found in your blood, little representatives. Proteins is what we're interested in. Now, these are constantly managed by your body, but sometimes uh, some of them are elevated, sometimes they're, they're depressed, and in some kind of diseases, you'll find massive increases or decreases in these so-called biomarkers. So, <clears throat> there's all sorts of smart people all around the world that are trying to identify biomarkers that we can measure in blood. There's probably several thousand people working in this area and they're looking for biomarkers for wellness and fitness, which is great for the jocks, um, stress, uh, infections, uh, cardiovascular disease, some of the chronic things that happen to us, diabetes, cancer, and some of the dementias or neurological diseases. So lots of smart people doing this. The trouble is we have to develop technology to measure these things. But by getting panels of these different biomarkers, we hope to be able to personalize medical diagnostics or health monitoring, health and disease monitoring, and give you the personal control, in a sense, over better health outcomes. <clears throat> so there's a problem, however. And the problem is that you can imagine, with five liters of blood, suppose you had a one centimeter tumor in your body, and it was shedding those protein molecules that I talked to you about because the blood's coursing at tremendous rates through your body. 
And you've got to find the proteins from that one centimeter diameter tumor in five liters of blood. It's a horrendous challenge, and it's why there haven't been too many new diagnostic tests developed since the human genome was sequenced, less than, less than two diagnostic tests a year, whereas we thought once the human genome was sequenced, we'd get all sorts of diagnostic tests. And I can tell you that right now in the healthcare systems in the so-called developing countries, less than 2% of the health money is spent on diagnosis and 98% on reactionary treatment. So we'd like to be able to develop more diagnostic tests that can be applied at a broader scale to a larger number of the population. This is a, uh, supposed to be planet Earth. I think most of you will recognize it. Trying to find a biomarker from a one centimeter tumor is much like trying to find one individual in the 7.3 billion people that live on the planet. It's quite a, quite a job. And to illustrate that, uh, what we've done with this globe is we've put uh, one dot, one of the, the blue dots on this map represents 50,000 people. So if you can be really quiet, we might be able to sneak up on that one person and just think of the excitement that you have in your lab when you find that guy, which happens in my case to be something I've never seen, a protein. There's two of them. <laughs> now these guys are identical twins. By the way, I've watched the last three games and I know their biomarkers are perfect right now. <laughs> three for three, guys. Anyways, they're identical twins. Their DNA is not quite identical because DNA or the genome is a little more plastic than we used to think, but nevertheless, they're essentially genetically similar. Very close, actually. But I can tell you that the proteins in their plasma are quite different when you compare the two. It depends on what injuries they've had, what fitness levels they've had, what sickness they've had, what food they eat. So they are biochemically individuals. Now, <clears throat> I've been uh, teaching immunology for 35 years at UVic. And I've taught about 3,000 students about the immune system. And the marks of the students are quite good. Um, I used to think I was a great teacher until it was, they taught me a lesson finally. And that is that they just love immunology because it's about their own bodies. It affects their lives from birth, in fact, even before birth, right to death. And so they embrace it. It means something to them. So this is a very interesting concept. The other thing the students taught me is that they're strangely comforted by the fact that they're immunologically and biochemically unique, as are all of you. In fact, there is no such thing as an average person. So if you look beside you, you are looking at someone who is really odd. They're not like you, and some of you will know this. Um, I'm going to just end because it's still, well, it's early in the day. I'll say everyone is different. Therefore, it's important for us to look at mar markers that are individually unique. Now, most medical lab tests look at an average in a population. So for example, if this was a given biomarker, say for, for cholesterol levels or something like this, you're often compared to the herd. You're compared to the average for your age and sex. Now this is great, it's the best that medicine can do at this moment. However, you would rather have your own basal level of biomarkers so that if something changes in that, it sends up a flag that there's something either really good, as in the case of the sardines, or not so good in the case of someone who gets a disease. So this is what we'd rather have, 
is a personal baseline where, and this is a, a level of your biomarker spread over time, and look at the red dot, you'll see that it's above your normal baseline. If I was to compare that level and that dot to the everyone appearing normal, you would see that you, in fact, are in trouble, or super fit, uh, whereas everyone else is, you're compared to everyone else, and it's not a good indicator. So, 1978, Masai Mara in Kenya. This is Dr. Lee Anderson on the right, and my wife Anne on the left. This is to remind me to tell you that Lee and Norman Anderson have been working for about four decades on proteins and how to better healthcare and medicine. And Lee is a co-inventor of the technology I'm going to tell you very quickly. So <clears throat> what we do is we develop a technology where you can take a single blood spot at home and drop it on a card. And you can do this weekly, daily, monthly, annually. So here's how it works. You put the blood spot on the card. You let it dry. You put it in an envelope and you send it across the country. When it arrives in the lab at the other side, what happens to it? And this will be a centralized lab. The blood is cut into tiny pieces, so we've effectively made it worse. The individual proteins are plucked out of that mixture, and the pieces are then squirted into an instrument called a mass spectrometer, which is what they use for drug testing, sophisticated instrumentation. The kind of results you get back, and this is from one blood spot, one person, over time, a bunch of different biomarkers. Look at biomar the red biomarker. It's going along at a normal basal level, your level, and then up and down. That's sending up a flag that there's something changed. What else can we get from this kind of information? This is a real-life example of ovarian cancer biomarker, and this is data from a friend, Steve Skates, at Massachusetts General Hospital, and he has, he's currently running one of the largest trials I know for diagnostics, 250,000 women looking at biomarker, a biomarker for ovarian cancer. These are the biomarker levels of three individual women. Uh, notice they're stable over time, and they're quite different. Now look at this woman. She's got a very low level of the cancer biomarker, CA125 for ovarian cancer. But look what happens the next time she gets her blood tested. Up it goes. It exponentially increases. This sends up a flag. And in Stephen Skate's data, this is just one little small sampling of it, that woman developed ovarian cancer. We would love to have these biomarkers tracked in an individual. Notice the levels of her even elevated biomarker are still in the norm below some of the other women that were healthy. Very quickly, I'll just tell you some of the things we can do with this. We can track colds or flu or stresses by following biomarkers in the blood. This is from a colleague who bled, his, bled himself over a year. This is a kidney infection from me, and I just want to point this one out. I started feeling fluish, terrible. I took my blood spots every day. We went into the lab after I had gone to the hospital and was treated with antibiotics, and my biomarkers obviously came down. I received the antibiotic at that point in the hospital. I probably didn't need to take the antibiotic. I was well on the way to self-cure. So this is kind of interesting information that we hadn't seen before. So the current healthcare system is reactive. It says, fix me when something's wrong. What we'd like to see is a future healthcare system where you're proactive and in charge yourself, of taking your blood in the comfort of your home. I know it sounds funny, but some people like it. You have the monitoring of your own biomarkers and you have better outcomes. So I think this technology, which is applicable to any biomarker you can find that's a protein, uh, will help us change the healthcare system uh, one drop at a time. So thank you. Where's Peter? <laughs>